Well, I've been uh, doing some more research on the topic of light, and I've run into this example of time dilation and their way of physically explaining light's characteristics with these, with this example of two mirrors facing each other and the light bouncing back and forth between them as as the mirrors. I guess travel by you or something but I been thinking about it and I've realized that this is really a, a very incorrect way of trying to set uh, trying to make an example of how lights characteristics work and one of the reasons is this example does not will does not work the reason is when the light beam that's bouncing supposedly bouncing back and forth between the mirrors you <laughs> you know it's it's not physically possible to see the side of a light beam bouncing if it's the if the light beam's going that way or that or that way you can't see the side of it it's like um trying if you shined a laser you, you don't see the beam itself unless uh, something goes into the path of the beam and reflects the light at you. The only time you see light is when it's coming at you from a particle, from a glowing particle. And if a glowing particle is traveling by you like this, <laughs> you're, the light that you're seeing is coming from that traveling object and the only reason that time is a little delayed is because the object's moving this direction and the light leaves the object and is coming to you while the object continues to move. So the light wave finally gets to you, but the object is over here now. And as it moves, so you're getting a delayed in location of the object as it goes by you. Not the clock, the clocks run slow. You know, I, th there's another ex <laughs> There's another example actually that that makes more sense that is the actual thought experiment from Einstein that is actually true it is correct but this bouncing a beam of light back and forth between two mirrors as it goes by you this is not correct you don't see sides of light the sides of beams of light you only see the the light that's coming at you from glowing particles it's like if the sun was out of your field of view and you're looking you know 90 degrees you know to the left from the sun if you're looking this way and the sun's over there you know how you don't see the light rays that's going by you you don't see the sides of light so this example does not work. You don't see a light side of a light beam bouncing back and forth. What you do see is light coming at you from a moving object, and that object could be here when the light wave that you see is over here. So you're seeing the object here, but it's actually here. So you're getting a delayed, you know, location of whatever object that is moving. And that's the only characteristic that of time you know of supposedly of time that's that's actually not slowed down but just delayed and it's more dependent on the distance and the location of the light of the particle that's glowing okay. so if if the distance is changing then the amount of you know delay that you get from that particle also changes. So if it's getting farther away from you, then the light waves that are coming at you are coming at you at a you know the, a, a lower frequency than if it was coming at you. So as it gets farther away, the more and more the delay factor you get of the you know it's not that the time slows down it's as it moves away from you the the light that you're receiving shows time going slower because the light waves you know are, are coming at um, intervals that are that are kind of god how do i explain this 
it's almost like if you if if every object is like a flip book uh, it's like you, if you if you were flat if the light from you was flashing you know x amount of times per second and you start to move away from some, from another person then the amount of flat the the flashes that they see is like a picture of you moving like your rate of motion it's like they see you here 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 but when you start to get away from somebody those flashes start to become you know they start to uh slow down you don't see those flashes quite as quickly so if you see flashes that are coming in a slower rate then it looks like time is going at a slower rate if something's coming at you, then you're receiving those flashes at a faster rate. So you're going to see that that object coming at you start to go move, or its rate of motion is going to be going at a faster rate, or or it look like it's going faster through time. So if you think about it, if something is traveling away from you, then it's going to look like time is moving slower for them because the rate of flashing waves of light that you're getting from that object as it goes away from you is coming at a slower rate so you see the object moving at a slower rate but and it's the total opposite for something that's coming at you something that's coming at you you'll see coming at you at a faster rate so you'll see that object moving faster and i'm going to go as far to as i'm going to go as far to say <clears throat> is if you are able to move away from an object fast enough at the speed of light, then you'll see the rate of motion of that object freeze in time. Because the, the rate of waves that you're receiving is, is come to a halt, basically. You're still receiving light at the same velocity, the speed of light. You're still seeing the light come at you at the speed of light. But the rate of 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 motion that you see the object at will be at zero because of your you know because of the distance that you're putting between you and that object if you increase the distance then the rate of time goes down if you decrease distance then the rate of time goes up so it has to do on your distance and it has to do with your location you could have your distance not change but your location change, and that's when you'll see a delay factor. When something goes by you, you'll think it's here, but it's actually ahead of that location a little bit. You'll see a delay in the location if the distance doesn't change, but their location is constantly changing. Now, if their distance is changing and their location is changing, then the rate of time that you're going to see is going to change. The delay factor will constantly increase the more distance they increase. But if they're not increasing distance and they're just changing location, then they'll just have a solid delay factor that is, you know, one, you know, either one second or one solid number of time, units of time or whatever, and that'll be it. But if it increases distance, then that delay factor increases. If it decreases distance, then the delay factor uh, decreases. So... <sighs> I don't know if that makes a lot of sense, but this concept is incorrect. The concept of the two mirrors like this is not correct. And you'll see how it's like, you see, they're, they're saying that this clock isn't, this one's not moving and this one is. So this person sees time going slower for this clock than it is going for them. But if you switch it around, if you are this clock and not this one, you think you're standing still and this one is actually moving slower. It's like you could flip this, this point of view back and forth, but in their explanation, only that clock is moving slower compared to that one. But from that per clock's point of view, this clock should be running slower. Because it looks like this clock is going by him down there, where from this guy's this clock it looks like this one's going by up here. So from from their both perspectives, they think they're standing still, and the other one is moving. So 
how does time only go slow for that one and this one's normal when this person is seeing the clock for this one goes slow? it's like it, it doesn't make any sense it doesn't work you can't have only one clock move slow and the other one move at a normal rate because they're both from both of their perspectives they're the ones at rest and the other clock is moving it doesn't work now I'll show you uh, Einstein's thought experiment that actually does work. Uh, I'll bring that up. Okay, this is Einstein's thought experiment right here that that it that does make sense. Einstein would often wrap up his work as soon as possible to contemplate the truths of the universe in his free time. It was one of these thought experiments he devised on that tram car that revolutionized modern physics forever. Right here. While receding away from the Sainte clock tower, Einstein While receding the away. tram car were receding at the speed of light. He realized that if he were to travel at 186,000 miles per second, the clock's hands would appear to complete at the same time, Einstein knew that, back at the clock tower, the hands would tick along at their normal pace. For Einstein, time had slowed down. This thought blew his mind. Okay, now, that is correct. What Einstein did, his thought experiment there, is correct. You know, versus that the mirror thing where you supposedly can see the side of a light beam, which you can't. But this is not the side of, of a light beam. He is receding away from the glowing particle. So the glowing particle that is sending light waves at Einstein, if Einstein is moving away from that clock at the speed of light, then the, the rate of motion they're going to see that clock at will freeze because he's traveling at the same rate that the flashes of light are coming at him. It's like the light still, he still sees the light, but he doesn't see the rate of motion anymore because he's increasing his distance so quickly from the tower. You see, so that thought experiment is correct. It makes sense because you're actually seeing the glowing particle. It's like you don't, you're not trying to explain it by saying you're looking at the side of a beam of light, which you can't. So what Einstein's thought here makes sense, but what it, what kind of confuses me is that it's not, in my mind, it's not the same concept for when you're going towards the clock tower. When you're going away from the clock tower at the speed of light, yeah, it looks like time has frozen, but when you're going towards the clock, then the rate of motion you're going to see is going to increase. So much so that it'll look like it's fast forwarding through time. It's going through time extremely quickly. And I'm going to go as far to say is that if you could actually go faster than light away from the clock tower, then you won't just see the clock tower come to a halt, but you'll start to see it reverse its direction of motion, its direction of time. And anything that you're going away from faster than the speed of light, you'll start to see go backwards in time. Versus anything that you're going towards faster than the speed of light, you'll see fast forwarding through time. You know, Einstein is correct about this idea of receding away from the clock tower, but it's not the same when you're going towards an object. When you go towards an object, you'll see the rate of time increase or look like it's you know, going in fast forward mode. So it's like if there's a distant galaxy way out there that you're going towards faster than the speed of light, you'll start to see that galaxy's motion increase to the point where when you get right up next to it, it's finally, you know, fast forward through time enough where you see what it looks like, you know, in the present day. But as you go away from it, you'll start to see its motion slow down. And if you go away from it fast enough, you'll see it reverse its direction. And you'll start to see the light waves that are, you know, from from its past you know it's, it's like the light waves that are out there have, are all in specific locations and you can change your position and see those light waves from different locations in the universe you're not going faster than light but you're seeing different times 
of emitted light waves, you know, and if if you're able to change the position quickly enough, if you can figure out how to do it. You know, it's trying to figure out how to go fast in the light is kind of difficult because you can't propel yourself in one direction shooting material out the opposite direction. You can't shoot the material any faster than the speed of light in that way, so you can't be pushed in the opposite direction any faster than the speed of light. You know, because the material that's leaving you is limited by the departure speed of light. You can't shoot material at twice the speed of light to be pushed, you know, close to, you know, faster than the speed of light in the other direction. And that's the problem. And there's nothing that you can shoot from you faster than light to be propelled in the other direction any faster than the material leaving. So that's the problem. It's not that you need an infinite amount of energy to go faster than the light. It's that you can't shoot anything away from you fast enough to go faster than the speed of light. Because it's everything that leaves you is limited by the departing speed of light. So th there's got to be a, another way of being able to propel or move yourself without having to shoot material away from you to do it. And whoever figures out how to do that will, will have figured out how to go faster than light.